Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful day in the Lord. It's another stellar day here in South Jersey. We're on a roll. I have um, some scripture here and um, and a devotion to go with it. And it's in, I'm reading from Ecclesiastes today and it's um, chapter two, verses one to 11, if you wanna follow along. And it's called Pleasure is Vain. And it, and it starts out saying, I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. But surely this was also vanity. I said of laughter, madness, and of mirth. What does it accomplish? I searched my heart, how to gratify my flesh with wine, while guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all of my labor, and this was my reward from all my labor. Then I looked on all the works of my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no prophet under the sun. Ecclesiastes seems at times to be a recipe for trouble. You are invited to try something only to find that it does not provide what it promised. One could be very disillusioned very quickly. The theme could be, quote, I'll try it until I find something that works for you." Unquote. If life is so short, let's see what will gratify the flesh while attempting to be guided in our hearts with wisdom. A major lesson one should learn from the study of this chapter too is what one really values. Human gratification must not attempt to triumph over the glory of God. Solomon would build, buy, or invent almost anything in order to provide himself with a spirit of happiness only to find himself emptier than when he began. He concludes, quotes, there was no profit under the sun. Solomon has become a testament to all that one can gain the whole world and yet be no richer for it. It was as if he had attempted to grasp the wind with his hand. What seemed possible based on his wealth and wisdom proved vain. These words ring so true in this passage take the world but give me Jesus all glory to God praise Jesus 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is such a powerful scripture and devotion. And Solomon, Solomon was a sponge. What did he have? A thousand women in his concubine? Just completely grabbed one whenever he felt like it. Women had no rights. They were just to be had. And they were in these concubines and they 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 hoped to be to to be found favorable in the king's eyes so that they wouldn't get hurt so they had to disgrace themselves over and over and over again in those concubines and look at all that he did and all the power that he had and everything that he had accomplished and yet he admitted it was all done in vain. And when we look at the world, people, look at what men have done here. They built everything. They built empires, skyscrapers, bridges, infrastructure. They laid the map for the uh, biology and biochemistry and science. All of it. And look at where we are. We're in the pits. They have their names written in books. They have Nobel Prize, Peace Prizes. They've won all kinds of awards for their discoveries, their inventions. And yet you can't get the greed out of their heart. You can't take the greed to want more. Like when they threw the indigenous people off their lands and colonized it. And then controlled the people on that land in slavery. And these are men that say they are glorious that they are the head, that they are the glory of God. Nah, they're not the glory of God. They're, they're the offspring of the fallen angels. That's who's running this world. That's who's running this world, people. And they have just a certain amount of time to prove that they can be better than God. And that time is almost up. As we see, all their efforts are not bearing fruit anymore. They've adulterated our food. They have uh, changed the, um, the DNA. The, um, everything is bioengineered now, hybridized. They're taking um, um, the information that they've gleaned uh, in, uh, under the microscope, and now they're creating laboratory meats. It's disgusting. We're seeing who they are. We're living now. They're breaking their own laws. The victims of crimes are now treated like criminals and the criminals treated like victims. We have to pray for women, people. We have to pray that the laws in the United States here continue to <clears throat> protect women. Because if the, if the government changes, all those laws fall by the wayside. New laws are created. We don't know what's going to happen if the United States government is taken over or changes, dra uh, uh, changes dramatically. We just take a look at the Middle East and those women out there. They're under moral laws. There's moral police there. One woman, <clears throat> her hair was sticking out of her head 
headpiece. And he wanted to kill her. Don't ever take advantage, ladies, of the protection that we have here in this country. That's why we must cherish and protect our rights here. And women must protect other women and they must stand shoulder to shoulder in solidarity. It's very difficult to be a woman these days, especially in these times. Because you don't you don't only see men looking down on women, but also there are women, your your sisters that have been brainwashed by by this theology and now you have women turned against women and men against women and sometimes you're walking the earth you don't feel like you have you don't have a friend the world is a scary place but you must rest in Jesus because Jesus loved women Jesus, there's so much evidence, people, if you'd only open your eyes to see what Jesus' ministry was all about. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you continue to have a beautiful day in the Lord. And remember, I love you and Jesus loves you. And to never forget it. Never forget it. God bless you and shalom.